has caught over 810 pound plus largemouth bass, holder of 13 worldwide patents, and inventor of the Weedless Trolling Motor Prop. Doug Hannon is the Bass Professor. With fishing or any other activity, you know, what is important is enlightened self-interest. And by that I mean people becoming knowledgeable about the subject, enough knowledge of it so they're interested in the various aspects of it. And we have a responsibility if we're going to participate in the angling experience to understand what's going on in nature and maybe even to stand up against it, you know. And what I'm referring to right now is the use of aquatic herbicides, which has become a huge government-funded program. You have to realize that the, the number one chemicals are made by huge companies like Monsanto and Eli Lilly and these big pharmaceuticals that make these sprays and they basically get a license from the government to use it. They get it approved for use on our waterways. And many of these things are just basically done by million dollar lobbying efforts that get this chemical approved. So it's the only chemical they can use. And I'll tell you the most important weed spray that's probably ever been developed was something called sonar, which is a chemical called fluoridone. And that chemical costs $1,400 a gallon. And it's being paid for, for you, by your taxpayers' money to the tune of millions of dollars to put in our lakes. And what it does is they say, okay, this stuff doesn't kill fish. And it doesn't. If they put the dose of, of sonar in the water with a fish in an aquarium, the fish is not harmed by it. But what it does do is it kills the vegetation in the water. And it kills it by destroying its ability to produce chlorophyll, which is what we know as plants turning green and how a plant feeds. So the plants turn this pale white and then they just die. But if you took that same bass and you put it in an aquarium full of vegetation and you put the weed killer in there and killed the vegetation, then the rotting vegetation will rob the oxygen out of the water as opposed to the plants which are normally by green photosynthesis adding oxygen to the water. So you've not only have you stopped a process that's beneficial, you've reversed it. At that point, you have tremendous kills. And when they put this stuff in water that's flowing, like a river that's going down to a dam, like in one of our reservoirs, what happens is all of that low oxygen water flows down the river and pushes all the fish just like a giant forest fire where they can't swim through it that way. So they get pushed and they when they end up at the dam or up tributaries where they get locked in, they die. And then they'll say, well, we had a fish kill, but it was limited to the dam area. Well, of course it was, you know, and so was the forest fire limited to the edge of the woods where the animals finally got trapped and got burned up. So if you end up with something like sonar in your water, you're doing a tremendous amount of harm to the environment. And what also happens with these things is they don't target specific weeds. They kill all of the vegetation. Generally, the excuse for using it is, well, we got an exotic like hydrilla, or we got milfoil, or one of these things that's, that's from Europe and it doesn't belong here. So it's non-native, we need to kill it. Well, those are the, the dominant vegetation and they're the, the hardiest vegetation. So what do you think it's gonna do to the delicate natural balance of vegetation in the lake? It's gonna smoke that. And that stuff is competing with the exotic weeds. So when, as soon as you kill all of the vegetation, then what comes back as a monoculture, as a single problem, becomes something like hydrilla. And it takes over the whole pond or lake, whereas it was only in limited areas where it was out competing the native vegetation and where it had a niche. So now the niche is the whole lake. Now they've got a problem. Now they've got something to throw more money at. And before long, you've got a budget with the government taking your money and destroying your water and doing it all in the name of improvement. And you can't, you can't measure it. The only way they measure success is by how much they spend. So if they get a million dollar budget to say, treat Lake Gunnersville for aquatic vegetation, if they don't spend that million dollars, they don't get it next year. So after they get the problem under control, they still want to spend a million dollars killing your your native stuff and the stuff that would grow back. And it's just a lose-lose situation.